Okay, so by now, I hope all of you guys have watched Peter McKinnon's Bucket Shot film. It is such a good film. It is such a good narrative film that all of you guys should actually definitely watch it. So we started the video with a very different kind of an intro. So in this particular video, in this particular tutorial, I'm going to cover that intro which Peter McKinnon showed in the starting of the Bucket Shot film. And doing this is pretty simple. All you need to do is have a VHS template which is there in the download link below and the font impact level which Peter McKinnon used. There are two versions of the font, one the normal one and one the reverse of the font. And the best feature of this particular font is that it automatically makes a rectangle, the white rectangle and you don't need to have a, another rectangle and then place the font over that rectangle and then compound the clip. This font automatically generates that rectangle. It is like a part of the font only. So that is the reason Peter McKinnon used it. And how did he find this particular font? How does Peter McKinnon or all the other filmmakers find this particular fonts which are so good? The answer is pretty simple. The answer for Peter McKinnon to find this particular font is Unfold. What is Unfold? Unfold is an application which is used to make Instagram stories. Most of you already know that. So how did you find it in Unfold? In Unfold there is a test option. In the test option there are many fonts which are very different and very unique. And in that particular area where you add the text, he saw that particular font which is impact level which can be bought on a subscription on Unfold. So he saw that font, he saw how cool it looks, he saw how different it is and then downloaded it from the website. The font is in the download link below, I have given both the fonts in the download link below. You can use it in a commercial project as well, there is no harm in that. And that is pretty much it. And that is how Peter McKinnon or all these other filmmakers or YouTubers find these particular fonts. The apps are the keys. So with that being said, this is a long tutorial so I'll jump right into it. What's up guys, Mr. Sammy here. Welcome to a new video. I hope you guys are having a great day. And with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Final Cut Pro. And these are the three footages which you guys will need. The download link is in the bio, just download it from there. So these are the three footages. I'm gonna just readjust them just a little bit. And then increase their speeds and place them on top of another. And for the first clip, I'm gonna change the blending mode to lighten. And for the second clip, I'm gonna change the blending mode to lighten as well. Lighting or screen, it is up to you. Both results almost in the same thing. So all total will get the overlay or the background as a combination of all the three layers. So just let it render. If you want to increase this glitch effects or this white effects, then you can compound this clip and then duplicate it and then change the blending mode to screen or lighten whichever you feel like and change the position just a little bit in that case you will just see that the uh, overlay is doubled and it will look really good and then compound that clip as well so that it, there is no problem later now i'm going to add the basic title just drag the basic title onto the clip remove all the extra portions Go to the font, choose impact level which is the font which Peter McKinnon used and increase the size as you feel like and write pixel sammy. And in small letters there will be a space, a black bar in the middle and if it is a caps lock letter then there will be no gap, it will be a white bar in the middle. So it is up to you, I am going to just keep it at no spaces at all but if you want to keep a space make sure to you keep all of the letters as caps lock and then readjust the position I'm going to just duplicate this layer and change the font to impact level reversed and then change the writings maybe hello, hello pixel 7 maybe add a little bit of rotation to it And then compound this clip. Now we are going to add some of the motion blurs which Peter McKinnon showed in this particular effect. 
Add in some motion blurs is pretty simple. All you need to do is add some directional blur to it from the effects panel. But before that, we are going to add some amount of shake into this particular font. So add in some amount of shake is pretty easy. Just go to the effects panel, type in earthquake and drag the earthquake clip onto the title panel. And keep the settings at default. It is pretty much good at default only. That is pretty much good enough. Now we are going to add the directional blurs. Just choose any point. Search in blur or go to the blur panel. Drag the directional blur onto the clip and change the direction to 90 degree. First set the amount to zero and set a keyframe and then set the angle to 90 degree. Go one or two frames later, just one or two frames. Set a keyframe again, increase the directional blur and then go to the next frame. You can see the keyframes in this keyframe animation panel and then set the amount to zero and set a keyframe again. So you are going to see this. I want to just increase the directional blur a little bit because it is too less, maybe around 200. And I'm going to just let it render so that you guys can see it. So that is pretty much good enough for Peter McKinnon's style. You can repeat this process of directional blurs at many many portions of the clip so that it looks really good along with proper sound effects. So I'm going to do it once more. Add a keyframe, set it to zeros. Go two frames later, set a keyframe again and set the amount to around 500 and then set a keyframe again and go two frames later and set the amount back to zero. Now we are going to add one more thing. You have seen in Peter McKinnon's clip that behind this clip, behind the title clip, there is another clip, another same kind of a directional blur. So what we are going to do is we are going to just copy the portion of the directional blur and then we are going to place it behind this particular layer and increase the size so that it looks better and it looks like there is some amount of directional blur behind this particular title effect as well. So we are going to just copy that particular portion, change it into a compound clip and change the position of the compounded clip, drag it below the main original title and set an opacity keyframe because so that it looks a little bit more seamless. Go to the first frame of this particular compounded clip, set a keyframe to the opacity, set it to zero. Go to the middle of this compounded clip, set a keyframe again, set it back to 100 and go few frames later and set a keyframe and set it back to zero. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the size of this particular compounded clip. So we can see this, we can see that the compounded clip behind this particular title effect looks really good and along with proper sound effects, it will be really, really good. So just simply compound this clip, add a keyframe to the opacity, just simply add a keyframe, increase the size just a little bit. You can decrease the opacity of the main compounded clip as well if you want to so that it looks uh, or blends in a little bit better with the background. So that is pretty much it. That is how we do the Peter McKinnon intro style for bucket shot. Don't worry, the tutorial for this particular effect for Premiere Pro will be up tomorrow. And now what you can do is you can simply just copy this particular background clip, background portion of the title effect two or three times and then add your sound design, add your sound effects and proper background music. And this is the final result. Thank you so much for watching guys, hope you liked my video. So if you are into cinematography, filmmaking, videography and photography then my channel is just for you and if you like my kind of content and if you like the stuff I do in my channel, the free stuff, the transitions, the plugins, the alerts, the tutorials and all those other stuff then please please subscribe to my channel and make sure that the post notification button is turned on so that you guys can see every time I make a new video. So let's just join our hands and make this family, make this community as big as we can. And if you have any kinds of doubts for the videos, for the later videos, for the future videos 
videos or any kind of suggestion or any kind of talk you want to have with me then you can follow me on instagram at this particular link and i will definitely definitely reply to you as soon as i get the message or see the message so with that being said thank you so much for watching guys and do let me know in the comment down below about what you guys are creating today about what you guys are creating with my kind of tutorials and all this other stuff so please please keep on creating and hustle and with that being said peace